Ah yes, the ability to remotely control my home server from anywhere in the world, so convenient. Now I just need to restart the server for these changes to take effect, no big deal. No, wait. No, I need to be home so I can press the enter button on my keyboard. What am I going to do? Oh wait, I have a switch bot connected to my keyboard. Problem solved. <laughs> In all seriousness, I actually have this set up and I needed it and it works perfectly. Ah, the switch bot. Maybe not as popular as I think they are, but they are so handy. It's one of those things that you see it, you see it in use, and you just buy it because you can find a use for it somewhere. What's so great about these is it's for everyone. You don't have to have a smart home ecosystem. You don't have to be involved with Amazon or Google or Ift or whatever. You can be, and it works great in those circumstances. But when I first saw these and saw how they worked and how simple they were, I immediately got one for my mom because they don't really like smart home stuff. It just works as soon as you open it, you pull the battery tab, it shows up in the app. You don't even have to sign up for an account. It just shows up. If you know someone that is not very tech savvy or whatever, all they have to do is open the app. Don't even have to sign into an account. As long as this thing is nearby, within Bluetooth range, it will work. And when I say it will work, there's a few different ways that it can work, but the most popular way is to stick this thing next to a paddle style switch, push the button, and that's it. Little servo inside pushes this arm and it can turn on or turn off a light. There's a little adhesive tab you can stick to the bottom or the top of your pedal to enable you to turn it on or off not just one or the other. So you only need one of these, you don't need two of these per light switch. But that is just the beginning of the capabilities of these things, and you can really use it for a lot of different varieties. Now, if you want a little bit more security, obviously anyone within Bluetooth range could control this, but if you do sign up for an account and you add it to your account, then it goes away from the network, or it doesn't become available for anyone. And even on top of that, you can add something like the SwitchBot Hub Mini, which allows you to control it away from the house on Wi-Fi or off of Wi-Fi, of course. And this thing does more than just act as a hub. It also is an infrared blaster and allows you to connect all of your SwitchBot devices to it and then, you know, control whatever you want or view whatever you want, such as the sensor, which is, as you can see, it's got the temperature and the uh, humidity on there. And that allows you to, you know, it's got a lot of different use cases. Like I said, whatever you can think of, but probably the most popular one is control a humidifier or dehumidifier with the push of a switch bot button. Now, like I said, these things can be used for anything that can be pushed with a button. As you saw in the beginning of this video, probably not the most conventional, conventional use for it, but I can tell you that when I am away from the house for an extended period of time and I need something to be pressed, I could A, bug my wife and ask her to come downstairs if she's home, and in my case, just push the enter button. That's all it needed to be done in that case. And no, as you saw with that error, it's just an issue with the uh, BIOS and it the fans are actually running. So <laughs> don't worry, my fans are actually running inside my server. It's just some kind of issue and I cannot figure out how to get rid of the error. Enter needs to be pushed every time you restart it or it shuts down. So if I have one of these, I can pull out my app, Right now, as you can see, it's connected over Bluetooth to both of these. Um, my hub is obviously not plugged in at the moment, which is why you see the uh, offline there. But all I have to do is click this, and it pushes enter for me. Let's go ahead and just unbox one of these. I have an extra one here. And see what how the setup is and how simple it really is. So we got some protective plastic here, and it comes with a bunch of different 3M adhesive. You can stick this part to the switch if you're going to use this on a light switch. And then it also comes with, like I said, these little hooks. There's an extra one as well, extra one of these two. You stick this part to the bottom of your switch or the top of your switch. And then on the switch bot itself, what you can do is change it from press mode, which is how I had it 
on my uh, keyboard over there. I, I actually had it in my garage as well. That's why it's called garage door. I had in, in my old house, I had a uh, just a regular push button garage door opener that kind of looks like a doorbell. So you just I just stuck it right on t right next to it. It came over, it pushed the button, and then it came back, which is why I have it in press mode. But I can sw switch it to switch mode, and now it stays open a little bit and allows you to turn on or off the switch, and it changes from press to open or off, close, or in this case, on or off. So right now, the switch would be on, press off, it closes, turn it on. As you can see, the string kind of goes in there, and then the adhesive sticks onto your switch. Just like that. Now, adding a new one, watch how simple this is. Pull the battery tab, boom, just like that. It's already showing up. And it's already working. This one's in press mode by default, but it says device is not added. Like I said, this will show up for anyone that has the app, but as soon as I add it, it will not show up for everyone. It will only show up for me. Now, that being said, let's check out the Hub Mini. I've obviously had this open before. I'm not fooling anyone there. Very simple. It comes with a micro USB cable. It's very lightweight, very small, and this is an IR blaster as well. It connects to your internet through Wi-Fi, so you don't have to worry about Ethernet, and I've never had an issue with it dropping off the network or anything like that. So let's go upstairs to the living room and check that out sorry about the audio and the lighting in here we're not completely moved in so we don't have a whole lot of furniture to deaden out the audio but anyways i have the switchbot hub here i'm going to plug it in right over there near the tv and see if that works um, for the, as far as the range for the infrared my tv is nice and clean no wires here as you can see so i don't want to put it up near the tv but we'll have to see what works best in this situation I do have an outlet behind here so should be able to feed a wire through through the back of this thing okay so ideally like I said I'd like to have it down here but I'm you can even see that down inside this console instead of on top of it we're gonna test and see if it works first I don't like anything to be up on top unless it's like a decoration or something but it's not a huge deal if we have to keep it up there okay so as soon as the switchbot hub booted up you can see that all of the bluetooth icons switched to clouds that means that all of the devices are now connected via the internet as, instead of bluetooth it's more reliable that way and it has a direct connection to the hub through the cloud and to your phone as opposed to having to stay within that bluetooth range now you do have to stay within blue that hub has to be with Bluetooth range of your switch bots, obviously, but as long as you plan accordingly, you should be good to go. So I just deleted my current TV. I'm going to add a new appliance TV. It's an LG and we'll do smart learning. Okay. So to add a device, it says point your remote to the hub mini, click smart learning. The indicator light went off. Press the remote button once. And now it has magically found my TV. And we'll try the different buttons and see. Let's try the power button since it's turned off. Okay, that did not work. Let's go next. Try the power button again. And that looks like it worked. Let's go over to YouTube. Okay, that's better. So as you can see, volume works. Channel would work if I was watching a channel. You can go to menu, pull up the menu. Everything works as it should based on the number two LG for me. All I had to do is click next at the bottom. So I'm going to click correct and save. I'll call this living room TV. And we're good to go. So we now have the SwitchBot hub back down under here, if you can see that and that we now have the console top blocking it. So let's check the range and see if we have good range here. Go to back. There we go. It's working just as it should, if you can see. Very responsive volume.
Yeah, it works great. Has not missed a single click yet. So I'm going to be fine with keeping my SwitchBot hub down there. And if I go back, I can also see that the office, which is the new SwitchBot I just created, the garage door, which is the switch um, that I created, as well as the sensor is all within range of the hub for me. And I won't have an issue with any kind of range, even if I'm away from home. Now keep in mind, if you are wanting to use Google Assistant, Amazon, Siri shortcuts, or if you will have to activate the cloud portion of the app and connect it to the internet, obviously, like we already did. But in this case, you cannot use it through Bluetooth. Obviously, it's got to connect to Amazon or Google or whatever uh, servers. So in that case, um, that's why the cloud icons are showing up here for me. But if you do want to set it up with, say, Google Assistant, add a device, set up device, click on the works with Google, and search for SwitchBot Smart Home. And then simply sign in after you click this. I've already done it, obviously, so I'm not going to need to sign in. But whatever name you set it up in the SwitchBot app, it will come up here at the bottom under not, uh, devices not in a room. I'll add this to my living room. And now we can send commands via our Google Assistant. And I am primarily going to be using Google Assistant in my house, so that's all I'm going to show you how to set up. But it's the same with so you just go to the skills section and search for smart or SwitchBot Smart Home. So let's give it a shot. Hey Google, turn on living room TV. There it goes. Hey Google, turn up volume on living room TV. There you go. You can see the little volume thing over there on the side pop up. So yeah, with this small little square of a device, you now have the ability to control your TV with Google Assistant or Amazon or whatever you want. You can control it from your phone without using the remote. I know how difficult it is to get up off the couch if you lose your remote, or if it's over there, you gotta go get it. And it's just such a pain. So this just simplifies our life that much better and makes our house a little bit smarter. All right, that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video.